Hey everybody! While looking for new video ideas and waiting for the new campaigns to come out, I stumbled upon a few videos about the best campaigns and scenarios to be released in the game, but not a single one about what would be the worst campaign. I don't understand how that's possible when the answer is so clear. Pachacuti is the Incan campaign, made by Basi and released with the definitive edition version of the game to replace Eldorado from the HD version. And even though the story behind it is pretty solid and very interesting, what we got in game is played by wonky objectives, repetitive gameplay and enemies. I'll go through each scenario individually, not because it's necessary, but because this rage against the campaign has been brewing inside of me ever since I played it months ago. Now take everything I say with a grain of salt, I'm not the best Age of Empires player. I have just played all the campaigns and not a single one gets even close to bringing me boredom and frustration as much as this one. The campaign starts with the classic Relic Recovery mission where the player is pitted against three enemies, Chanka, Kuyos and Tambos, and has a possible ally in the Keshwa tribe. Each of the enemy holds in their possession an artifact, or relic card, that must be captured and brought back to the flagged area, and here lies the first issue of the scenario. These aren't relics, they are relic cards. The world's lowest unit with the world's smallest line of sight, a line of sight of one square meter. Not to mention that if it enters contact with any enemy unit, it instantly gets converted to the enemy, and you must recover from them. That in itself is already a barrier big enough to add significant care needed to complete the scenario smoothly, but it doesn't end here by any means. Each of the four relic cards are placed on opposite sides of the map, three deep within each of the enemy's bases, and the final one on an island east of Kuyos. Look at this bullshit, it's on an island, protected by a tower and jaguars. Why? This is not a naval scenario by any means. Yet the player must build a dock and transport ship to recover this. The island relics seem to be an alternative option if you want to avoid going for the Chanka relic, as they are the strongest enemy, but that's not well explained at all. The game just casually drops the bombshell. Hey, bring back three artifacts to the base. But guess what? No treasure map included. So, as you embark on your clockwise adventure around the map, battling enemies of increased proximity and difficulty, you stumble upon the island relic like it's some sort of accidental archaeological discovery. There's also the fact that the game's objective is very ambiguous when it comes to what to do with the artifacts. The sidebox show capture three artifacts, but it doesn't show that you should bring it to the flagged area in your base. But that's a minor issue that can be solved with something I don't do much, reading the objective page. The second chapter of Pachacuti is arguably the best one. After Viracocha shows how much of a chicken he is, the player is tasked with building a wonder in Cusco and defending it from the fury of Chanka and Uncle Hualuk. And they come with fury. Even on lower difficulties, both send waves of battering rams, infantry, and later when the wonder is completed, trebuchets. Now, just because it's the best scenario doesn't mean it's perfect in any way. Resources are limited, and you are forced to protect the two villages in the vicinity of Cusco so they can keep tributing resources to you. Both Kana and Kanchi are utterly useless, and their army consists of men-at-arms and skirmishers, so you are forced to waste resources to defend them, for resources or let them die and have all three enemies throw everything they have at you without distractions. One other small issue, you are not the one building the wonder, it's the city of Cusco, with two villagers. Two villagers. If they die, you lose. Problems aside, it's one of the better wonder scenarios in my opinion, and the sense of urgency you get by having to manage defending Cusco and your allies makes it very fast paced and reasonably entertaining to play. Kill Urco. This is the only true objective of the scenario taking Pachacuti's brother off the race for the Incan throne. The scenario is in a time-tested format. You have a set army and have to walk through the mountains to reach the castle on the other side, where the enemy stands waiting for you. In general, missions like this don't seem to be popular, like crossing the Pyrenees in Tarek or the cleansing of Paris in the Grand Dukes, but I like them quite a lot. It's more dynamic, takes less time and usually doesn't get boring quickly. This is the case here to a certain point, however, it's Pachacuti, and of course it has very obvious shortcomings. The first you run into is the allegiance switch of the population coming in the form of them actually switching to your control instead of tributing resources. Maybe it's just a personal preference instead of an inherent problem of the scenario, but I do feel like having to control a very weak and limited economy in this type of scenario feels forced and out of place. You get villagers in very awkward places, with limited resources to extract, and you're not really allowed to build anything useful either. Getting past that point, you rally your troops and volunteers you find along the way all the way up the mountain, finding Urkru's troops everywhere you find them until you reach the outskirts of his citadel, where you gain access to siege units. Two onagers and three siege rams. Just what you need to storm this bitch and take over the region. But don't make a mistake, as the siege engines are essential for victory. 
In case you do mess up somehow and end up losing the free siege engines, don't worry, Cusco will send reinforcements to help the cause. At the base of the mountain. Rams and onagers. At the base of the mountain. Yeah, I know I can build a siege workshop closer and just ignore the reinforcements, but why send it then? What kind of masochist chooses to send outstanding help in the shape of siege rams, but place it so far away you would double the time needed to complete the scenario if you decide to use it? Nitpicky for sure on my part, but I actually had to redo the scenario because I thought it would play out like the similar ones from other campaigns, and these small differences cause way more trouble than what they seem to, at least in my case. A very straightforward scenario. Woman Carpa is a dick, and you need to destroy their four castles, and as a side bonus, take one of their two friends, Abankai or Andahuailas. Uncle Hualak is also here, because of course they are. It's a story about an Incan civil war in a time where only these people lived around here. The general idea of the scenario is very common in a lot of other campaigns, so it's hard to criticize when it has been proven to work well, and it's honestly a staple of the game at this point. The problem lies within the historical and gameplay part of it. Like I mentioned before, you are Inca, fighting Incas with potential Inca allies. The repetition here is palpable and makes the scenario feel very dull. As the wiki suggests, if you master balasters and have some siege units along, you can just steamroll everyone with little resistance as long as you survive the raids in the beginning. The scenario also gives you two potential allies, the Colas who arrive as reinforcement with Jaguar warriors and rams, and the priests who ask for eight villagers in exchange for help. The calls are decent help, they will throw bodies at Uncle Hualak for as long as they can, and at least when I played, they did some damage until I arrived with archers and mowed down the rest of the survivors. The priests, however, gave me two relics and some old men that can sing along to heal the wounds of my army. It might be seem useful to some, but let's be real, my troops are expendable. Hope you liked the last scenario, because now we get the grind of the Chimur 2, Electric Boogaloo. Very similar in most ways, even in map position, the scenario is a slight improvement from the last one due to its secondary objectives, even if they aren't as meaningful as they could be. You start on the south of the map, with the task to take over the port city of Pachacamac, out west by killing their four chieftains. Once that's done, the game tells you to bring 15 soldiers to the pyramid in Chan Chan, kinda like Bismarck marching in Paris to force the French to surrender. But there are side quests, destroying docks and capturing cisterns, the latter being something very new and unique to the game, the ability to inflict heavy thirst upon your enemies, dry out their crops, and cause dehydration so bad mothers in the city would breastfeed their offspring powdered milk. Except it doesn't really do much besides crippling Chan Chan's army a bit. This could be wishful thinking from my part, but it could be cool to see actual effects caused by this. Say the amount of units created remains the same, but they are weaker or even downgraded. Maybe some villagers deserting and setting up camps somewhere or switching allegiance. The objective to take down the Chan Chan markets near the water is in a similar fashion, although its problem is much more infuriating than the cisterns. Their navy and coastal defenses is incredibly tough to fight and break through. However, as soon as these secondary objectives are done, all you need is a pack of slingers or arbalasters and some trebuchets, and you can stroll down the pyramid in one push without having to make much of an effort. Which brings me to the general issues of gameplay in the campaign. And the first one is this, the Incas have no cavalry. Once you reach a critical mass of archers or slingers, there's very little the enemies can do to stop you. But what about onagers? Yeah, they can be annoying, but you send in eagle warriors and that's dealt with. Or in my case, you lose the army and rebuild until it works. Both options are meh. If you micromanage your way to victory, the further you progress into the story, the more predictable and boring it gets. If you suck more ass than a German tourist in Prague, you get frustrated to no end and either force yourself to finish, drastically limiting your enjoyment, or you'll abandon the campaign. But the woes don't end here. The Incas like a reliable way to reach long-range units. Once you hit the Imperial Age, just slap down some trebuchets and bombard your targets from a safe distance, easily defended by your army. Despite the campaign's one-dimensional playstyle, it still presents a considerable challenge, and it's one of the hardest out there, mainly due to the enemies having infinite resources and a constant flow of units. However, this isn't unique to Pachacuti. It's a common issue across many campaigns in the game, so it feels a tad unfair to single it out as a main problem here. Another significant flaw in the campaign is the repetitive nature of the factions encountered. They're all Inca. This stems from the civilization's historical isolation during the time period, leaving few alternative options that aren't included in the game's civilization roster. While the creator attempted to address this by incorporating plumed archers and jaguar warriors among the enemies in certain parts of the story, it's a minimal effort considering everything else remains the same. Same technologies, same bonuses, same strategies, same weaknesses. It's not anyone's fault, really, it's just an inherent limitation of the campaign. 
However, it significantly detracts from the campaign's entertainment value. Could it have been done in a different way? Yeah, but not in the way the campaign was made. With the story being how it is, there's very little room for variety in enemies. And even if the devs release more civilizations from the region, I doubt they would be so different that it would improve the quality of the campaign enough to change this. The story of Pachacuti and the Incan Empire is fascinating and surrounded by mystique and obscure events. But I feel that Age of Empires is not the game for it due to the nature of the game. While the Incas are a compelling civilization to play as, being fun, strong and unique, facing off against other Inca factions becomes monotonous. They can't exploit each other's weaknesses as effectively as they could with different enemies. Nor can their strategies shine as brightly as they might against varied opponents. It's easy to criticize something like this just for the sake of it and not give any actual input on how to improve it. So get ready, cause it's time for unhinged suggestions. They could switch for a better first chapter, without any fucking relics on wheels, to explain how the Incan Empire came to be. Then they could recycle some of the scenarios that already exist, like the Field of Blood or War of Brothers that are a bit more distinctive and polish them a bit. Then polish a bit more. And then just go crazy. Limiting the campaign to just cover Pachacuti is a part of why it is as stale as it is now. Like switching from just him to actually tell the story of the whole empire. Maybe a scenario similar to Lake Poyang, where you must visit neighboring tribes to convince them to work in the construction of Machu Picchu, which was a holiday home for the ruler of the empire. And have the final scenario be about the downfall of the empire, with the arrival of the Spanish. I know, I know, I'm as sick of the Spanish and French as the next guy, but it would bring some diversity to it. Or the devs could take the body route, and just pull something completely new out of their asses. I mean, if it worked for the Byzantines, one of the most important empires in history with a vast amount of eligible leaders for a campaign, why wouldn't it work for one that we barely know anything about? Make the Chinese have discovered the Americas by accident, and the Incas put their foot down and kicked them out in the great Sino-Peruvian War of 1445. Or a previous iteration of the Incas grew massively around the year 800 and faced off against the Mayans in Panama. These are all probably really dumb ideas, but it's 6.30 in the morning and I live on the internet. It's my duty to broadcast my opinion regardless of how stupid it is. I could go on and on about it, but the truth is, one campaign will always have to be the worst. If it's not Pachacuti, it would be another. And it's not like the campaign is completely unsalvageable. From what I've read, it's extremely accurate when it comes to history. And in terms of gameplay, it definitely has its high moments. Like the second scenario, or some enemies having fire towers. And that's it for me. This is very off-brand for this channel, but I was completely devoid of ideas and it seemed like this could be a fun experiment. So let me know if this was more entertaining than Pachacuti's campaign. Oh god, that's such a low bar to set.